are going to discuss about previous year BHC first semester question answer. Okay, here is short question answer. Before watching this video, must watch question paper discussion video. Link in description. Every question mentioned in description, please do seek. All right, the next question, explain the second law of thermodynamics. Here is the answer. The second law of thermodynamics state that any spontaneously occurring process will always lead to an escalation in the entropy of universe. In simple words, the law explains that an isolated system entropy will never decrease our time the second law is also known as the law of increased entropy number b answer active transport is the most common mode of transport of ions against a concentration gradient ac across a biological membrane it involves utilization of energy which is provided by energy providing molecules such as atp however membrane proteins play key role which forms pumps, ports, channel and gates that allow selective movement of ions across the membrane. Number C. Mention four differences between mitosis and meiosis. Alright, this is the answer.
Okay. Number D. What are the redox reaction? Explain with an example. Answer. An oxidation reduction reaction is any chemical reaction in which by obtaining or losing an election. The oxidation number of a molecule, atom or ion varies. An example of a redox reaction is the formation of hydrogen fluoride. The photosynthesis reaction is sensitized by chlorophyll. Okay. Next question. Write the difference between microtubules and microfilaments. Remember, this is a long question. It comes with five marks. So here is microtubules and microfilaments difference. Microtubule is a helical lattice. Microfilaments is a double helix. 7 nm diameter 20 to 25 nm diameter. Microtubule composed of alpha and beta subunits of protein tubulism. Microfilament composed of contractive protein called octane. Microtubule stiff and resist bending forces. Microfilaments flexible, relatively strong and reduced bucking. Microtubule have cell function 6 as mitosis and various cell transport function microfilament help cell to move okay next explain the phase of eukaryotic cell cycle answer the cells are released from mitosis into a condition called G1 phase. In this phase, RNAs and proteins are synthesized but there is no DNA replication. The initiation of DNA replication marks the transition from G1 phase to period of a space. This phase lasts until all of the DNA has been replicated. Here the total DNA content increase from the diploid value of 2n to fully replicated value of 4n. The period from the end of a space until mitosis is called G2 phase. During this period, the cell has to complete diploid set of chromosomes. S phase was the synthetic period when DNA is replicated. G1 and G2 stand for the two gaps in the cell cycle when there is no DNA synthesis. The S phase is marked by the S phase activator although no molecular terms have been defined for this phase. Mitosis depends upon the activation of a pre-existing protein called amphase kinase. It has two subunits. One subunit activated by modification at the start of amphase. The other subunit is a cyclin. It accumulates by continuous synthesis during interface but is destroyed during mitosis. Its destruction is responsible for inactivating amphase kinase and releasing the daughter cell to leave mitosis. Here is the diagram. The diagram is very important.
all right here is a super long question write a note on the classification of carbohydrate with suitable examples answer it is a group of organic compound occurring in living tissues and foods in the form of starch cellulose and sugar the ratio of oxygen and hydrogen in the carbohydrates for example 211 it typically breaks down in the animal body to release energy the general formula of carbohydrate is cx h2o whole four types of carbohydrates Alright, carbohydrates are two types, simple and complex. Simple are also two types, monosaccharides and disaccharides. Monosaccharides are divided into glucose, fructose and glycatose. Disaccharides are divided into maltose, lactose, sucrose. Complex are divided into polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are divided into starch, fibers and glycogen. Let's discuss about simple carbohydrate. Simple carbohydrates are the basic type of carbs, soft drinks, candy, cookies, and other sweet snacks contain simple carbohydrates. These foods are often made with white sugar, a form of processed sugar. Next, monosaccharides. Monosaccharides carbohydrates are those carbohydrates. that cannot be hydrolyzed further to give simpler units of polyhydroxy aldehyde or ketone for example glucose here is the formula of glucose next disaccharides on a hydrolysis disaccharides yield two molecules of either the same or different monosaccharides the two monosaccharides unit are joined by oxide linkages is called glycosidic linkages for example sucrose next complex carbohydrate complex carbohydrates represented an important energy source for your body they provide the sustained fuel for your body needs for exercise daily living activities and even rest polysaccharides polysaccharides contain long monosaccharide units joined together by glucose linkages most of them act as food storage for example starch starch is the main storage polysaccharides for plants next discuss the difference between level of protein structure mention the biological roles of protein answer the different level of protein structure are known as primary secondary tertiary and quaternary structure primary structure of protein the primary structure is the sequence of amino acid that make up a polypeptide chain 20 different amino acids are found in proteins the strict order of the amino acids in a specific protein is the primary sequence for that protein secondary structure of protein protein secondary structure refers to a regular repeated pattern of folding patterns at the alpha helix the polypeptide backbone coils around an imaginary helix axis 
in clockwise direction tertiary structure of proteins tertiary structure refers to overall folding of the entire polypeptide chain into a specific 3d shape the tertiary structure of enzyme is often a compact globular shape quaternary structure of protein many proteins are formed from more than one polypeptide chain the quaternary structure describes the way in which the different subunit are poked together to form the overall structure of the protein for example the human hemoglobin molecules shown below is made of four subunits biological roles of proteins plant proteins meet the needs of the emerging seeding in terms of nutrition and growth through their enzymatic structural functional and storage function plant contain a number of specific type of proteins not found in other living organisms and these have certain function for example most plants have some kind of storage organ for reproduction where different nutrients sources are stored so that coming seasons proteins carbohydrate and oils are different type of nutrient sources accumulated in plant storage organs the necessary building blocks for the emerging protein in the next generation growing plants next question discuss on another video stay tuned